What's going on, world? I go by the name of CA Revolution, and this is React. And I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. I'm not bragging, it's my testimony. And I know this one thing for me is that I came a long way. So today is a very special day for me. This is the day I was supposed to die. This is actually the place I'm standing from when I got shot. So 2004, June 1st, it was a Tuesday. I was walking down the street. I was coming from this way. Uh, myself and one of my neighborhood friends, we had just finished playing basketball. We was playing basketball back there. And then if you turn around, my house is behind that white house. So like this white house right here, my house is right on the other side. So I'm in walking distance. No drama, no nothing. It was a regular day. Typically, um, back then, I'm at work or I'm at school. On this particular day, my driving school class canceled, so it leaves me in a neighborhood with a lot more free time than I normally have. So we just finished playing basketball. We were headed back home, and out of nowhere, a car pulls up, and the passenger pulls out a gun and shoots me in my stomach. Somebody came at this light right here. This red light, they just came by. Me and my friend was walking. I was right here. No, my friend was right here, and I was right here. So you would have thought that somebody was gonna shoot, or if they was gonna shoot, they would have shot him. Nope, I got shot. And on June 1st, 2004, I was supposed to die. Actually, this is the bullet wound. That's the bullet wound, and then that's the scar I got from when they did the surgery and everything, so. That's what the doctor told me. I got shot in my stomach, I got shot from an angle, and I was left there, man. You know, the person I was with, he ran to go get help. And I remember my cousin, he came over me, he was looking over, he was looking down at me, and he was like, you know, calling my name, he was like, Chris, man, like, what's going on? And I was smiling. So he thought that I, he thought it was a joke. I was smiling. I remember asking God, like, God, am I going to die? And I remember I could audibly, I could hear God's voice, no. And the way God said no, it's like he yelled at me for asking a dumb question. That day literally changed my life forever. And it changed my life forever because it made me not take for granted life, the life that I was given. See, me, I thought like the end of the world, man, you die and, or not even you die. I thought the end of the world, man, like when the world ends, like everybody's going to die at the same time. I wasn't doing rebellious stuff. I was literally always at school or work. That was my life at the time. Um, I wasn't a rebel, it was just, I didn't have a conception about when death actually happens. And death literally can happen at any time. And unfortunately, my heart is heavy. Um, I'm super frustrated and feel so many different mixed emotions because we see people dying at a rapid rate. Um, in particular, the person that I'm talking about is George Floyd. It's so sad to see so much injustice done to African-American men. And I hear the argument that we should worry about black on black crime first. Black on black crime, which is what I was a victim of, black on black crime, we should worry about that first. As if we can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Any crime done to any person is wrong. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what color the person is who committed the crime. And it doesn't matter what color the person is who was a victim of the crime. I beg you to appreciate the life you've been given. In these times, I beg you to pay attention to the life you've been given, to the purpose, to the reason that you are still alive to this day. Can I answer why I'm still alive? After a lot of people who've been shot in their stomach, especially have died, I can't. But what I can do is assume that I'm supposed to fulfill my purpose and I'm gonna spend every minute of my life doing that very thing. So what do I do this video for today? I do this video for you. I do this video for the person who may not have the answer to every question, but here's one answer to one question. You are still here, why? So you can fulfill your purpose. You are still here, why? So you can be impactful to someone else. I encourage you to live the life that you deserve to live, to stop making excuses for you to fulfill your purpose, to create reasons for you to fulfill your purpose and for you to fulfill your dreams. It's the best thing that could ever happen for you. It's the best thing that could ever happen for the world. You have a voice. 
A voice is what the dead doesn't have anymore. And if they did have a voice, they would tell you they wish they had a little more time. I guarantee the number one thing any dead person that could speak would ask for is more time. A second chance. With every breath, you've been given those same exact things. More time and another chance. Let's not sit in silence when we see injustice done. Let's not sit in silence when we see our brothers and our sisters hurt. Let's use our voice. Today I was supposed to die, but what if you were me? What if today is your day? What impact will you say you have? Who can you say that you've reached? How many lives have you changed? How many people have you impacted in a positive way? What will be your legacy? It's easy to die for. Live for it. That's what's challenging. And I'm not what I'm supposed to be, but I'm not what I used to be. And I know this one thing for me is that I came a long way. And I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. I'm not bragging, it's my testimony. And I know this one thing for me is that I came a long way.